Welcome to Happily Holistic. I'm Amy Lee Mercury, and I'm a medical intuitive with 20 years of experience. I've written 15 books on health and wellness. If you've had a medical intuitive session with me, you know that the thoughts and emotions within you, what has been passed down from your ancestors, and everything that surrounds you can impact your well-being. In this podcast, we touch on my favorite ways for you to improve your health and feel more joy. We dive deeply into everything health and wellness with a big dash of spirituality and a sprinkle of business. We spotlight the uplifting and the positive and share the secret ways top wellness authors and celebrities get inspired, stay healthy, and enjoy this beautiful life. I can't wait to get happily holistic with you today. Hello, hello, and welcome to Happily Holistic. I am so excited that you're here. I am Amy Lee McCree, medical intuitive and your host. I hope you're doing wonderfully. We are continuing our discussion of the healing home today. So a lot of you probably know my latest book, The Healing Home, Your Room-by-Room Guide to Positive Vibes, is available everywhere books are sold. So I am excited to talk to you today about some of the contents of that book. And we're going to focus today on increasing our wealth, because everybody, of course, is very interested in wealth. And... um, We love that and we want to manifest wealth and we are abundant as we are now, one way or another. We're thinking in terms of gratitude here and we're going to discuss that too, but we're going to work on how to optimize our wealth and what we need to do in the home to bring more money into our lives and to attract that energy. So I'm really excited to talk about that with you today. I have personally used that in my life. Um, all of these tactics we're going to talk about for wealth generation from an energetic standpoint. A lot of these will involve the home because that's our focus, but there'll be some other things that I'm going to throw in there too. So I'm really excited to walk you through some of that. So in the book, The Healing Home, we talk about three major philosophies that we use to make over the energy of our home to create the life of our dreams. So Our home is an energetic imprint in which we spend a lot of time. And because of that, it has a a big effect on the out picturing of our lives, the way the events of our lives unfold, as well as our health. So as you guys know, I've been a medical intuitive for 20 years. And my job is really to talk to people's spirit guides. That's what I do. And so people's spirit guides share with me what they need to do to solve their problem, whether it's a health problem, a romantic problem is a big question, um, and a prosperity problem, a career problem, a relationship problem, a situational problem, whatever it is, the guides share with me what to do to solve the problem. As a medical intuitive, we find the root cause and we drill way down and find the remedies. As a person who helps people, as a multidimensional healer who helps people with prosperity and career, there's a lot that we do that involves the home. So sometimes the guides give us recommendations around what to do in the home. So that's why I wrote this book, because I wanted to bring together all of these things that I've learned as a medical intuitive about the home. Plus we combine it with my shamanic training. So lots of you know that I was initiated by my late medicine teacher into an oral tradition that was passed down from her teacher and her teacher's teacher, who was a um, tribal member of an American Indian tribe and shared these shamanic secrets and this oral tradition with my teacher's teacher with the intention of getting these strategies, these teachings disseminated to more people. So I have that perspective. I do write about this in some of my books, but a lot of it is, you know, primarily from that oral tradition. And then there's other shamanic things that I've brought in over the last 20 years teaching shamanism as well. So there's some cross-cultural shamanic elements that we'll discuss and we've talked about in the book. 
Plus we talk about the philosophy of Taoism, which includes uh, acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine and feng shui. And we also talk about the philosophies of Vedism, which includes uh, chakras, which you've all heard about. Everybody's very into chakras. Um, Ayurveda and Vastu, which is the cultivation of the energy of the home through Vedic philosophy. So those three perspectives come together in the, my book, The Healing Home, Your Room by Room Guide to Positive Vibes. And we're gonna use all of those perspectives today in our discussion of what to do to increase wealth in the home. So first of all, we're gonna talk about the shamanic side. So from the shamanic side, we use ritual and ceremony in a lot of ways to take an intention and strengthen it. So everybody's heard of vision boards, they're very popular and things like that, but you can take a vision board aspect and bring it into a shamanic ritual. So you can create a visual representation of what you desire. Right now, I have a vision board that um, I've taken a old uh, check from my literary agent for a different property, which was a great check. And, you know, I've already deposited it and I still have a copy of it. And so I've added a lot of zeros to it and written something else on it. So that's my way of saying this other book will make even more money. So I put that on my vision board. And because I like glitter, it's outlined in gold and purple sparkles. Uh, gold is obviously a color of wealth. So is purple, which we'll discuss. That's a, from Feng Shui and Taoism. Um, and also kind of royal. And so is green. So in that particular vision board, I have some gold paint, some purple paint, and some green paint involved as well. That same vision board has a long list of affirmative statements on it. Um, one of my friends, awesome financial author, Shelly Campbell has, oh my gosh, like amazing affirmations in her books, um, Zero to Zillionaire and The Wealthy Spirit. All of Shelly's books are fantastic. In 2017, I took Shelly's um, class it's called financial stress reduction. And uh, I used to have a marketing agency. Uh, sometimes I still do, but my writing career has gotten busy. So let's scale back. So I did some marketing for Shelly and I took her financial stress reduction course, which was fabulous. Um, and so there are a lot of great affirmations Shelly created. I'm going to share the ones that I use. Some of them are adapted from Shelly's. Some of them are just additional. Um, one of the ones I love from Shelly is people love to give me money. So you could put that on your, your vision board. Um, I have those tacked up also on my bathroom mirror. So that's something else you can do. Have a real comprehensive list of affirmations of what you desire in this case, from a financial perspective, but you can put other things on there too and have that on your bathroom mirror and, and say that daily looking in the mirror. And that's part of what I do too. When you are looking in the mirror, you're saying people love to give me money. I am rich and wonderful. That's a Shelly one. I know these because I say these in the mirror. Um, I also love money comes to me easily and effortlessly waking and sleeping. That's another Shelly one. You're looking in the mirror, you're saying those. So that's a side note, but also that list or a pared down version can go on your vision board. I mean, I used to just call these collages and posters. I've made them since I was like a teenager about what I want. Um, obviously they're a little bit different back then. Uh, and my mom always liked collage, collages too. So I think that's why. Um, so you can have your affirmative statements on there. If say you're interested in buying a home or a second home, you could have visual representations of what that might be like. You could, um, if you're interested in, you know, avoid, avoid, affording, not avoiding, affording a luxury vehicle, you could have a picture of that, whatever you're into. So you can create your visual representation of the energy you want to bring into your home. And then you can infuse that with intentions. You can state the affirmations, you can picture and see everything. 
And um, then you can do a ceremony from a shamanic perspective to release that energy into the world. So there's a lot of different things you can do. You can use um, the energy of mint, which is an abundance herb. Garden mint, if you happen to have a garden, you know, just regular mint. Or you can buy spearmint, peppermint, whatever mint you want. Um, spearmint's a good one. Garden mint's a good one. If you have access to dried mint, awesome. Then you can do a mint burning ritual. We do, we do outline how to do this ritual in the healing home book as well. Um, so there's some steps as far as like safety. So you, you know, don't burn yourself or your house or things like that. But ideally you can even do this outside, you know, on a, on a patio, an area that doesn't have flammable leaves and stuff around real close. And you would take, you take your dried mint, you can bring your vision board out. You can state your statements as you're burning the mint, holding the vision board even near it, if you desire, not too close and releasing these intentions out into life in the multiverse. So then you're placing your sales order. You can imagine it like golden threads going out and have the intention that all that transpires will be for your highest good. And we have some affirmative statements like that, invocations that I use. Those are adapted from things I learned from my medicine teacher that help us say everything's for the highest good. Very similar to what I say at the beginning of medical intuitive sessions, if you've had those with me. Um, very similar to what I teach in my shamanism, automatic writing and channeling classes to have people say, so they have like a really clear high vibrational transmission and uh, receive that guidance in a really clear, clean way. So you can say, you know, for my highest good, I now release the intentions on golden threads to life and the universe and to all of my guides, guards and teams and, and do this with joy, with love and gratitude. And then you release it. And then you can place your vision board in a place where you see it regularly. So you're continuing to get the affirmative statements, see, you know, whatever the depictions are and, and see them as if they're already existing and then feel a sense of gratitude for that. Understanding you have put it out there. You've asked your guides to help you bring it into being. You've placed a sales order. And, you know, I know there's like a lot of law, law of attraction stuff. And that was very trendy for a long time. Some of it's, see, you know, some of it's got some good stuff behind it. And I know in my life, you know, now I'm in my forties. So I've been doing this for quite a while. And I was a bit of a late bloomer, you know, after college, I was working as a multidimensional healer, working as a medical intuitive. I was teaching, I have a degree in teaching and it didn't really begin until my thirties that I started to become a successful author. And now, you know, at the level that I've gotten to. And so I didn't take the traditional path. Some of my, you know, my close friends were pretty successful right out of the gate from college. They, they had, you know, I don't know, more prestigious college degrees and things like that. And I'm a learning disabled person. Um, and, you know, I've made a real go of taking those gifts and creating a life that suits me. And a big part of how I've done this is through understanding that you place your intentions, your order, the energy of your intentions out into life and you allow them to come back to you. And so there's this element, we actually talk about this a lot in the book in the Taoist chapters of yang and yin, yin and yang. So the, the yang is, what we would traditionally call masculine, although those, those adjectives are changing and adapting and that's fine, but you know, the yang of thinking and doing. So that's the intentioning. That's putting, you know, your, your thoughts together, considering what you want, what you desire, placing it into a visual representation. And then the yin is the feeling and the being. And so that is the embodiment of what you've put together. So that's the thing that's really the crux of part, at least part of my success is taking those two elements, those yang and those yin elements and bringing them together and using the mind, taking the action, 
making those representations, making those intentions, and then also feeling, being, receiving, embodying, um, even in sleep. That's why I love that one affirmation. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly waking and sleeping. That is a very balanced affirmation from a yin yang standpoint, because you've obviously taken the steps and you're making money while waking, but it's also easy and effortless. That's a yin side of things. And it's during sleep, which is the ultimate yin activity. So use those elements. So in your ritual, consider that. Consider that as you burn your mint, as you release your intentions that you've crafted, you've used your mind, you've used your heart, you've used your physical body to write it down, to make your depiction, you've spiritually engaged in the process, and then releasing it with the smoke of the mint, which is clearing, but it's also abundant because mint is an abundance herb. And then allowing it to come back to you and, and being in a state of knowing that it will come back, you know, in a way that's for the highest good. Sometimes these intentions come back in a way we didn't see. Um, I had a, a project that is what drew me to find my literary agent and want to be an author. That project has yet to be published. I still will probably try to publish it at some point. But it started me down a path where The Healing Home is my 16th book. And it's my 15th traditionally published book. Many of these books have been bestsellers. Um, you know, did I start? My intention was to have that one project go to hundreds of thousands of people. That's not what happened. I've had many projects go to hundreds of thousands of people instead. It might still happen. I actually think it probably will, but it'll probably be about 20 years later. So um, it's interesting the way our intentions come back to us. However, what I will say is this path has been even better, perhaps, you know, holistically better for me. It's had components of things that I wouldn't have thought to intention, but the correct frequency for my highest good, the highest good of all life is what came back to me. Um, so when you enact your ritual, understand that. And with any ritual, you know, you could state if you choose this or something better. And that's one of the phrases I use at times. We'll be right back after this short break. Hi, it's Amy Lee Mercree. I'm so grateful to be a part of my medical intuitive clients' journeys of healing and evolution. We're all on our own paths to greater health and self-actualization. In a medical intuitive session with me, we connect deeply with your spirit guides and ancestors and dig into the root causes of what's going on in your physical body, emotions, mind, energetic body, and spirit. To learn more about my medical intuitive work, check out the Work With Me page on amyleemercree.com. Is saying this or something better make space for, you know, whatever is for your highest good. So that's our shamanic idea, one of our shamanic ideas for prosperity. So take that into your um, consciousness, think about that. And if you don't wanna you know, get real involved with creating a dramatic visual representation, you can do the same thing and just write those affirmations on a piece of paper in green or gold or purple. And state them, say them out into life, the multiverse, burn some mint. If you don't have mint, burn some incense or, you know, whatever herb you have around, light a candle. If you want to get real simple, it should be a beeswax candle. You can hear about that in the um, main bedroom makeover episode prior to this. Uh, all the reasons why we want to eliminate and avoid VOCs from a health perspective. Uh, and you can read about that pretty extensively in the book, The Healing Home. So check that out. But you can use a candle and send your intentions out, place your sales order with life in a way that has 
both the yin and the yang components and then allow it to come back to you. Doesn't mean you don't do anything towards making it happen. You continue to enact steps to make it happen. But you also allow it to come to you. You allow insight, ideas to come to you, perhaps in sleep. And you um, flow with the changes. Okay, so let's jump into the um, Taoist perspective and some things we can do. So in Feng Shui, which is based on the five Taoist elements, um, you've probably heard of the Tao, T-A-O. That's like, you know, the overarching principle of Taoism, which is basically based on the concept that everything is alive. And um, it's funny, I've had friends over the years, spiritual friends who know me well, who have studied comparative religion and things like that, and have said that um, they feel like I'm very Taoist. And it's just because I believe everything is alive. And that's how I have always experienced life. Even as a child, you know, the outdoors, especially is where I would see spirits and elementals and energies and things like that. And I thought of everything as alive. And so Taoism always felt very natural to me. So from that Feng Shui perspective, it is based on something called the Bagua, Bagua, B-A-G-U-A. Um, that is like a hexagonal sort of overlay you can imagine placing over the first floor of your house. And then if there is a second floor as well. And the front of it lines up with the front door. Um, the formal front door, not the door you use the most necessarily, the formal front door. So the section for wealth and prosperity is the back left corner. The section for household expenses as well as family is the middle left section. So you can kind of imagine like a, if you put a square over and not every house is shaped this way, but for our purposes today, we go more into how you lay the bagua out where everything is you know in the book and what you do about funny shaped houses basically but if you were to take a square place it over the overlay of the first floor with the front door being the square that's in the front and center then um, it's a square that would be divided into nine sections so the back left square would be what wealth and prosperity and then the square uh, closer to the front door, but still on the far left is household expenses and family. So those are the two sections we want to optimize for wealth and prosperity. It can also be a good idea to optimize that front and center section where the front door enters the foyer, which we have a whole chapter on in the healing home. That is in the bag while it's about your career. So it's a good one to optimize. Um, the front right section is helpful people in travel. So that's one you may optimize in your quest for um, wealth. And if you need more skills and knowledge about how to do that, then the front left corner is the skills and knowledge corner. We're going to talk specifically today in this podcast about the wealth and prosperity corner of the bag law, which is the back left, and some things we can also do for the household expenses and family section. In, in specifically in relation to the household expenses. So um, in that wealth and prosperity section, that back left corner of the bagua, the element that is associated with it is water. So in traditional Chinese medicine, water is the final element of the creative cycle before it recycles back into wood. It's interesting in the bagua because the elements are not laid out in a circular manner like they are in the Taoist creative cycle and in a lot of ways in the meridians of the body from a traditional Chinese medicine standpoint. The, there's different things that flow into each other, absolutely, but there are definitely spots where the water meridians, which are kidney and bladder, flow into the wood meridians, which are liver and gallbladder. So, um, there's also backflow where the water, kidney, and bladder meridians, especially the kidney meridian, flows into the lung meridian, 
uh, lung and large intestine are metal. And they're actually previous to water on the creative cycle in Taoism. So it, it's kind of an interesting thing when you get into the detail and minutia of all of it. But we're going to kind of just skim the top and really pull the stuff out that will be most helpful in manifesting wealth today. So in that back left corner, first of all, you can add pictures of money. I ordered a, um, an, an ornament. It's technically an ornament. Um, I think somebody probably made it on Cafe Press or something but I ordered it and it's printed with $100 bills and it's ceramic. So in that area of the Bagua glass is also synonymous with water as well as actual water. So you can put pictures of money, things that are gold, things that are purple, which is the big color of prosperity in Feng Shui. And also things that are green. Growing things are um, good. You do not ever want dead or subpar plants. So if you're, I'm, I'm, like I mentioned, learning to save hold and kind of ADD. So I am careful about plants in the house because I think it's worse to have plants that are not in perfect an optimal condition. They forget to water them or whatever. I also tend to feel like I want plants to get to be outside. Um, in the healing home, there's lots of you who have green thumbs and who are great at that. And so I take you through types of house plants and flowers from all of the perspectives that we discussed that will be great for each room of the house. So what you can put in there. Um, so you, you could do, you know, growing things in that area as well. And those also go great in that household expenses and family area, which is a little bit closer to the front door, still in that far left side of the house. Um, so in that household expenses and family area, we'll, we'll pop over there and we'll come back to the prosperity area. That area, the element is wood. So anything wood is gonna feed the chi there. And um, water element also feeds wood. So it's good those things are next to each other. They can kind of play off each other energetically. Um, things that are columnar are helpful in that area. I have a wooden, didgeridoo that I like to keep in that area for that reason. Um, and, you know, you've seen probably images of the bamboo plants that are, you know, the household lucky bamboo kind of thing. That would be great because it's wood, it's columnar, and it's green. So that would be great for that area. Let's say you have a shower curtain in that area. You could place a depiction of tall big round uh, trees with green and wood images, for example. So when we optimize that area, we get money for household expenses, which we all need, money for the family, whether that's just you or other people. And then popping us back over that far back left, purple, gold, green, um, depictions of wealth, absolutely. Water elements. So one of the things I feel is really enhancing to the chi in that area is a fountain. I have one that was given to me by a friend that looks like a candle, but it's actually just like a fountain. And I learned um, from that friend to use distilled water. So if you use distilled water in a fountain from day one, then you don't really have to clean it. It doesn't get gunky. So that's something to consider. Um, I always try to keep that fountain really full. It's interesting too, because in the years past, I had a previous home probably just had a higher humidity content uh, where the water really didn't evaporate as quickly. And in the home I'm, I'm living in now, it evaporates more quickly, but I also have more expenses. So it's an interesting thing that could be um, energetically metaphorical. So you always want to keep that topped up. Now, if you didn't have a fountain, could you have a bowl of water? Yeah, but it's kind of stationary. So I think it's better to have moving water if you can. Could you have a picture of water? Yes, you could. Um, you might have a picture of a waterfall that is just, you know, cascading into your prosperity area and just bringing all this energy of money. 
you also can use an image of water in the career area of the home, which is by the front door. Um, and that can be, I, I actually have an image I painted myself because I kind of didn't really find what I wanted from an art perspective, easily accessible. I like to paint, so I painted an image. It has blue, all the different blues and blacks that are um, indicative of water and um, sparkles as well. And I painted it like a river. And I also made sure to paint it so it was as if the river was flowing in the front door and, and then through the foyer to bring that energy, all the energy basically that needs to come in through the front door to power, power all the areas of the bag well. So um, those are some ideas for that prosperity corner. And also for any of the areas, you can write affirmative statements. So uh, affirmative statements for the prosperity corner. My wealth grows every day. I am wealthy. I am rich. I am incredibly grateful that I have so much money. My investments in retirement accounts grow and I am completely supplied for the entirety of my life with all of the wealth, money, resources, and joy that I desire. Things like that. I'm so grateful for all the money I make. I'm so grateful that I'm wealthy and financially secure and stable, things like that. In the household expenses area, you can place affirmations about um, the family as well, because that's also what it's about. But um, I, all my, bill, this is an, actually an affirmation from Shelly Campbell, I believe, because it's ingrained in my brain, because it's on my bathroom mirror. All my bills are paid up in full and I still have all this money. Thank you, Shelly. It's a great one for household expenses. Um, so affirmative statements, uh, they don't have to be displayed. I mean, obviously it's nice to display them because you see them. I personally put a, either a printout or something I write down, whatever, um, in the color of that element for the bagua in that area, a list of statements for each one. I have a nice life, so you might like it. That's, that's what I'm saying is I've worked energetically on my life as well as taking the steps in real life. And I feel like doing the energetic work and the receiving and the yin side of things makes the yang side of things, the action side of things flow more smoothly because our energy is optimized in the home and within our being. Moving on to the Vedic side, the Vastu side of things, we'll talk about the chakras associated. So that's something we talk about for every room in the Healing Home book. The chakras associated with the things we'll desire in that room. Um, we also talk about the Vastu elements and what we can do from that standpoint and the ways that we set up the home. So for prosperity, one of the chakras we would work with would be the root chakra, the, the, the red chakra at the bottom of the spine. It's all about our security on earth. The next chakra we'd work with is the one above the sacral chakra associated with the color orange in the traditional chakra system about our um, abundance and our sensual enjoyment of life. So we could optimize those two chakras to help with our wealth and prosperity. So to do that, affirmative statements are amazing. We also talk in the book about uh, plants, aromatherapy, crystals that you can use, all of those things. So for the root chakra, um, I also think, I don't know if we talk about it in the book. I think I do. Um, we talk about herbs. So to bring health to the root chakra, you can actually use the herb dandelion root and leaf. That is a liver tonic. So it's actually from a, from a Taoist perspective, traditional Chinese medicine perspective, it works on tonifying the liver, helping the liver do its job of cleaning the blood. The blood is very much associated with our root chakra. And the earthy energy of dandelion is really helpful for that root chakra. So you can do dandelion tea to optimize your root chakra and support your liver. And for your sacral chakra, you can use essential oils. So you can use the essential oils of Lang Lang or Jasmine, and you could place them in a carrier oil 
and massage those on your abdomen, on your sacral chakra and on your low back and let those um, aromatherapy elements really infuse you with sensual enjoyment and embodiment and that embodiment side of things. So I think for me, I was born a psychic, you know, intuitive kid. I'm what you might've heard of the term an HSP, highly sensitive person. I was born that way. Uh, it had its ups and downs as far as life goes, but uh, I have learned to optimize my life and myself. And so in doing so, that means that I've optimized my energy and I've understood that using those elements can create the life that I desire. So I understand my internal is a projection that creates my external. And the home is sort of the intermediary between those two things. So by tapping into the sensual enjoyment of massaging those oils onto the body, you help yourself be more embodied. I have seen the more embodied I got, which I wasn't born that way. So this has been my journey. Some people are born very embodied and their journey is to become more intuitive. I was born intuitive. I was barely in my body. I don't even, I'm outside of time most of the time. So to get into time, into space, into the physicality of being has been my journey and the way that I have optimized my career and um, my ability to be prosperous. I think when we're less embodied, it can be more challenging to make the waves we want to make in the physical world. When we get more embodied, we are able to do that more. Now, the waves we want to make in the energetic world, in the psychic world, even the emotional world, those are easier to make. If we're very embodied and we're not intuitive, then we work in that direction. So everybody's different. But for our topic today of wealth and prosperity, being physically in your body, feeling seated in your body, feeling like at this moment, see if you can feel this. Can you feel all the areas of your body? Can you bring your awareness into your feet, your legs, your arms and hands, your torso, your head? Can you feel those all simultaneously? Are you owning your space? Are you fully rooted in your body? That is an ingredient for prosperity. Um, a lot of times we, especially if we have trauma or we you know, have pain or discomfort in the body, we disassociate from being really embodied. So we have to get that squared away. That helps us when we're in body, then our internal projections that we're placing outward into the external world are more powerful because we're in here fully. Now, it's interesting because in my medical intuitive work, sometimes things come up about attachment and that includes in attachment to incarnation. My theory is later down the line, when we're moving into disincarnation, our level of detachment from life, relationships, the body can make that easier. But we need to be attached to our identity, it appears in most cases to generate prosperity and to create the life we desire. We have to care about it. So it's an interesting balance to strike and you can reflect on these words and think about which direction do you skew? Are you, are you pretty embodied, but you wanna be more intuitive or are you just a highly sensitive person, intuitive and you need to get more embodied? And then think about the ways that you can do that. From that perspective of wealth and prosperity, embodiment helps you attract wealth, yeah. But sensitivity and intuition helps you discern what you want, create the um, intention around what you want, and also retain a sense of empathy and compassion and sensitivity to be in right livelihood and service so your wealth is um, benefiting to all life. So those are some, just some things to reflect upon and to work with some of these things we talked about today, these techniques, and pick up the Healing Home, your room by room guide to positive vibes, where I have hundreds of tips on everything you can do for your home, especially around prosperity and wealth, because that's definitely a big thing that we do. So make sure you check it out. Please tag me on social media at Amy Lee Mercury, especially on Instagram, if you get the book, and I will repost you and tell me how you like it. 
what you did. If you have, if you do our, any of our rituals from the book or today's podcast, take a picture, tag me on Instagram. I'll repost you and I'm excited to see what you're up to. You can find The Healing Home, your room by room guide to positive vibes in bookstores everywhere. Everywhere books are sold online and in person. And I hope that you check it out and that you enjoyed this session, this uh, podcast. And I am sending you love and the energy of wealth and prosperity, which is just showering over you with gold sparkles right now. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for listening to Happily Holistic. I'm so glad you were here today. If you'd like to find my new book, The Healing Home, a room-by-room guide to positive vibes, you can find it everywhere books are sold, on IndieBound, Barnes & Noble, and Amazon.com, and on my website, amyleemercree.com. If you've ever wanted to tap into your intuition and learn how to talk to your spirit guides, as well as deepen your understanding of the entire unseen world, join my membership, Intuitive You, short for Intuitive University, where you receive an entire year or monthly, every single month, two live channelings, including a question and answer with me. I will be doing channelings, many guides, many guards, many goddesses, Plus, you get my healing tools, recipes, meditations, affirmations, and much more. If you would like to go deeper in a healing home session with me one-on-one, you can find that at amyleemercree.com under sessions. And if you'd like one of my signature medical intuitive sessions, find me on amyleemercree.com under sessions. Also, come visit me on Instagram at amyleemercree and see what I'm up to. I hope you have a beautiful day and enjoy all of the wonder that this world offers. Thank you for listening to Happily Holistic.